Lou, we'll size it up with you first and foremost. Uh, before we get to what's going to happen in 2024 between these two teams, you know, you've got the rivalry with Florida, you got Tennessee, you got South Carolina to a lesser degree, and of course, Georgia Tech at the end of the year, which you guys pretty much just stomp them. Uh, size up the vitriol with Clemson. How do you categorize this one? How much yeah. do you care about this one? Uh, I mean, I care about it because Clemson has been a good program the last 15 years, but uh, I, I'm 45 years old or 46 years old. Very few people my age or younger consider Georgia Clemson a, 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 a rivalry on on par with Florida, Auburn, or Georgia Tech. Um, I, you know, I, I, I know what happened in the 80s, but I was five years old when that was happening. And so, you know, and so was everyone else my age and people younger you know, now we play twice every 10 years. We're close to them geographically, but it's almost more of a um, – some people consider Georgia-Tennessee a rivalry game. I, I'm a traditionalist. I think Georgia has three rivals, Florida, Georgia Tech, and Auburn. Um, Clemson and Alabama aren't rivals, but they had a rivalry for a six-, seven-year period. Clemson and Ohio State played – what was it? three times in five years or something in the postseason, And it, it became a mini rivalry within that sort of five or six year period. But like no one really considers Clemson Ohio state a rivalry. So now older Georgia fans, <clears throat> yes, they, uh, they put Clemson on par with uh, like a, like, you know, Georgia tech, maybe not Florida, but you know, maybe with, you know, Georgia tech, Auburn, Clemson, and then Florida kind of at the top. Um, and it's not a disrespect thing to Clemson. It's a, it's, a, you know, people my age haven't watched Georgia and Clemson play every other year for our whole life. We've watched them play twice. You know, we, they played twice in the two thousands, twice in the 2010s. This is the second time they've played this decade. Well, hopefully somebody on offense can score this time around because with JT Don't Daniels worry. and DJ out there, uh, poor DJ, that was his first as starting quarterback at Clemson. And the, the guards and the tackles were in his lap every play. Yeah. Uh, that was the beginning of what we saw at Georgia defense, of course, for the rest of the season. Jason, how would you take on that uh, Georgia Clemson rivalry in regards to what that means for you and for Clemson fans? If yeah, I'm a little, I, I'm a little older. So I, I remember when they played every year and it was a bitter rivalry, you know, back in the eighties, um, but, but Uncle Lou kind of hit the nail on the head there. It, it's just going to depend on who you ask, how old they are and what they remember. He, he, he said it. They, they've played five times since 1995. This will be the sixth time if I'm not mistaken. So, so if you're not, if you, if you're a little bit younger, you're not going to remember what they did in the eighties. You weren't around for it in the seventies. And, um, you're, you're not going to remember how bitter that thing was, um, they just don't play enough anymore. They they just, you know, the, the younger faction of the fan base, they just don't view Georgia that way, despite the fact the campuses are about 70 miles apart. Um, it'd be nice if they played a little bit more often, but, uh, you know, in, in this era, in this landscape, it, it's just it's just not really feasible. All right. Um, yeah, looking at uh, this matchup, Lou, do you have any concerns? I mean – this is a total mismatch here. Um, since the last time these two teams played, both these teams have gone in opposite directions. Georgia hasn't lost a regular season game in four years. Clemson has lost more regular season games every single year since 2020, including four last year. Um, all this I'm hearing about their wide receivers that were five stars and maybe they were hurt last year or maybe they didn't play and – Maybe Club Nick. It's, a, it, it's way too many maybes um, to be playing Georgia in week one. I, I, I don't – Georgia's got – or Clemson's got a great defensive front. Okay. <laughs> uh, they're about to play the best offensive line they're going to play all year. That's at best, I think, a push for Clemson. But their secondary, I think, is an issue. Uh, their offensive line is clearly an issue. Um the last time I saw Clemson play, K. Clemson got sacked eight times against Kentucky. So people can make up their own mind about how Georgia's defense may stack up against that. Um, they beat Kentucky 38 to 35. 
Kate, you know, Kate Klubnick's turned the ball over in every single game he's ever played. And again, I, teams can improve from year to year. Players definitely can improve. And you see a leap year one to year two a lot of times. But it just seems like a lot of, <clears throat> it seems like Clemson counting on a lot of, I hope this happens or this could happen or this player could be that or this position group could be that. That That's too many ifs um, to be playing Georgia in week one. Um, I, I mean, I don't see any chance at all Clemson wins this game. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how they'll score. Um, I, I, I don't really know how they'll get first downs. I like Mafa, but Mafa playing behind Shipley as a complete and total change of pace is one thing. Uh, him carrying the ball 20 times is another. I mean, so, you know, he averaged more yards than Will Shipley is what I keep hearing from Clemson fans. Well, so did Quinshawn Junkins back up at Ole Miss. And, you know, and he ran the ball 10 times less per game. I mean, Moff was good, but who's, you know, who's behind him? You know, this, you know, again, Clemson recruits well, they're talented, but it hasn't worked. Offensively, they've been a complete mess for four years. Where's Sammy Watkins? Where's DeAndre Hopkins? Where's T. Higgins? Where's Justin Ross? Where's a quarterback that can complete a pass? And, and look, I'm not expecting them to have another Deshaun Watson or Trevor Lawrence. Those are once-in-a-lifetime QBs that they got back-to-back. I mean, it was unbelievable. But, I, I mean, I don't know anybody who's watched Kate Klubnick play and goes, boy, I don't know what we're going to do. Or, you know, I, I mean, he looks lost. He holds on to the ball too long. Um, you know, I don't know. It, I mean, Georgia's not perfect. The defensive line, you, you know, can can be – had by an elite offensive line, which Clemson doesn't have. I mean, they don't have Alabama's offensive line. You know, Georgia got pushed around in the SEC championship game by an NFL offensive line at Bama. Clemson doesn't have that. Um, the running back situation is a little bit up in the air and kind of a mess at Georgia. Um, but this ain't 2017 Georgia. I mean, Carson Beck's the best returning court, you know, quarterback in college football. Threw for over 4,000 yards last year. He'll throw for that again. I don't um I, I don't see much of a path for Clemson in winning this game. To you take all that in, JP? Uh Dabo needs some serious help from you. Can can you scheme something up here? I th- this is gonna be a good litmus test for where Clemson's at, you know, heading into this season. They, you know, they've they've as a team that was one of the national powers there for six, seven years, they've taken a major step back the past three years. Four, uh, three losses, three losses, four losses in the past three seasons. Um, a, a offense that has been as discombobulated as almost any you've seen across the country. I, I think a lot of that's had to do. A lot of that's got to do with youth injuries. You know, um, installing a new scheme last year. You, you can there's there's a lot of blame to go around. Um, I do think Dabo's done some things to address the that kind of that you know bringing in Matt Luke. Um, you know. The, about the only thing he didn't do was hit up the portal hard. You know, he's, he's hired a couple of new coaches to try to address some of the ex- inexperience over there. But um, I, 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 I'm, I'm not picking Clemson to win this game by any stretch. Make no mistake. But over the past few years, or you know, going back to 2013, 2014, whenever I've seen Clemson get punched in the mouth and get their doors blown off one time, one time. Duke, um, I, I would very much be surprised if they got boat raced in this game. Um, as I don't, surprised as you were about Duke or more surprised? Yeah, I don't think they got boat raced by Duke, man. I think they went out there and played sloppy and overest, over, you know, underestimated their opponent, didn't look ready. I, I don't think you got to worry about them being ready for Georgia. Um, I think they'll be up for this one. Um, the game they got punched in the mouth in was South Bend a couple of years ago when they went up there and got pumped. Um but that's about the only time they've got punched in the mouth and, and just flat rolled over. I, yeah, I, you've only seen it one time in yeah. the past. I like years. Matt Lou's a great hire. I mean, he was at Georgia, and, you know, we got extremely lucky. We had Pittman before that, who I think's probably the best offensive line coach, and Matt Luke's right there with him. And so we sort of lost a great one and had another one waiting right there in Matt Luke, and he uh, retired. I, I don't think we'll ever know the real story there. I don't know what went on there, something, but. Something happened. I don't know what it was. But anyway, I'm glad to see him back in football, and he's a, a great offensive line coach. I mean, Garrett Riley is a great offensive coordinator. Um, 
maybe we'll find that out in year two. And with Matt Luke, I mean, the guy's not going to turn water into wine. I mean, he inherited eight NFL offensive linemen when he became the offensive line coach at Georgia. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think Clemson has that. Um, maybe he'll beef up the offensive line over the next year or two through recruiting and development and things like that. But I'm not expecting Matt Lute to come in and be a miracle work on that offensive line this year, just like Garrett Riley wasn't going to come in last year and put up 40 points a game like he did at TCU with Max Duggan. So yeah, I, I'm with you. I don't expect Matt Lute to be a miracle worker. I, I do think Clemson's got some talent in that offensive line room to work with, or I think he's got some talent in that offensive line room to work with. I think they have vastly underperformed going back four years now um i think it's been a huge issue it's not like there's no talent in that room you know you got a bunch of four stars i think a couple of former five stars it's not like they're, they're devoid of talent or anything but no i don't think he's a miracle worker i don't think i don't expect that kind of jump in year one i think you probably see uh more improvement in year two than you would in year one just like we'll probably see more improvement with garrett riley's offense in year two as opposed to year one but but for me it, it all starts with quarterback K. Clubman, yeah. right? He, he, this is a kid who, at the end of his sophomore season, he was nowhere near where a lot of people thought he was going to be, including my, myself. You know, you watch him, you watch what he did there at Westlake in high school, you know, and he looks like he's just oozes that it factor and he gets at the collegiate level and he's just kind of like a deer in headlights. The game's just so fast for him. Um, he looks like a different dude this year, so we'll see where he is, but uh, it's going to take. I think for Clemson to pull off the upset Saturday night, man, it, it'll take an almost perfect, you know, performance from those guys and Georgia making some mistakes that they don't routinely make. Yeah. It sounds kind of cheesy because people kind of use it as a throwaway line whenever you're talking about an upset and people say, well, you can't turn the ball over. But like in this case, I think because of the problems Clemson had last year, turning the ball over in every single game, like it is worth mentioning here without just sounding like you're regurgitating something you hear all the time. Clearly, they can't afford to turn the ball over here from a confidence standpoint, too, coming off of last season. If they were to come out, let you know, first couple of drives and put the ball on the ground or Cade Clubnick were to throw an interception, you know, and that starts getting in his head, you know, here we go again type of thing. We can't hold on to the ball. If that were to happen, I could see a situation where the game starts to steamroll or something like that. If they play a clean game, if they don't turn the ball over, if they are able to run the ball, keep the Georgia offense off the field, then maybe we end up with something similar to what we saw in 2021 i'd be shocked if there's no offensive touchdowns again i mean the odds of there not being an offensive touchdown in any college football game in today's world is astronomical so there's no way i would bet on that but uh you know some points will be scored but um you know maybe they find a way to keep it close if they can run the ball and, and of course not turn it over um and like you said maybe georgia makes some mistakes too. georgia had some turnover problems last year too and, and didn't force a lot either um and he didn't really get to the quarterback that much last year. Uh, now, Kirby's got this thing. I get so mad uh, about th this whole affecting the quarterback thing that coaches say. I, I, yeah. I get so mad. But we affected Jalen Milrow every time he dropped back to throw in the SEC championship game. And guess what he did? <laughs> Ran out of the pocket and threw the ball downfield or took off running for a first down. <laughs> the only effect I want to see, I, I hate to use the expression here, Mark, but I'm going to do it anyway. You know what you get when you have me on. But I want the only effect I want is to see the quarterback's dick in the dirt because then he can't run for a first down. He can't throw a completion. He can't do any. This idea that, well, sacks don't matter, sacks are over. The only time Kirby says that is when we're struggling to get them. That's it. A couple of years ago when we were leading the league in sacks, that's all he wanted to talk about. So sack the guy when you get back there. Not, not that I think Cade Klubnick's going to you know run for 200 yards in this game, but I'm just – you got to be able to get to him. Um, and, and I think Georgia will, by the way. I think they will get to uh, – I think they will get to Cade Klubnick in this game uh, uh, a lot. All right, Jason, my last question for you. Paint the scene of a Clemson upset. Uh, I, you know, I, I kind of touched on it earlier. You know, Clemson's going to have to be about near perfect. They're going to have to be able to, you know, have some success running the ball. Um, you know, I, I'm a big believer in Phil Moffa, but this is going to be one of the best. Th this is going to be the best Clem defense Clemson sees by far all year. Um, you know, and, and I still think that offensive line's a work in progress. I, I just don't know how much success they're going to be able to have running the football, which means they'll have to throw it around some. And I don't know that anybody's 
that confident in Klubnik, those receivers being able to do that, even though I think they're going to be a little bit better this year. I don't know that they're that much better. Um, but for Clemson to win, Klubnik's going to have to, you know, protect the football, make good decisions, not turn it over. He's going to have to make some plays with his legs and, and be a factor in the running game. Clemson's defense is going to have to be stout. They're going to have to force multiple turnovers. Uh, I think that's the Clemson only path here. They, 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 they got to play about perfect and get some help from Georgia. This is what I will ask you, Uncle Lou. I will ask you about Carson Beck, and certainly you can add anything to this game or any other matchup or uh, regarding the Georgia season. When I look at the rankings of quarterbacks, I'm pretty impressed with how deep it is. Like I go down like 30 spots and think that guy's a pretty good quarterback. But at the elite level, if Carson Beck is the best quarterback and nobody judge or nobody uh, confronts this in any way, everybody believes Carson Beck's the best quarterback in college football. He just doesn't strike me as CJ Stroud, Bryce Young, Trevor Lawrence, Deshaun Watson caliber. Yeah. Uh, I kind of agree with that. He's not a very well, I, some of it might be personality. He hardly has one. Uh, <laughs> Which I don't actually mind that he's he's very quiet. He's reserved. Um, you know, he's not sort of out there like some of the other um, sort of maybe superstar players are. And he's not uh, he doesn't run around. He, so he doesn't get that kind of attention that some of the other players get either. I mean, he's a traditional pocket passer. I mean, you don't see that much anymore. It's becoming a dinosaur in, in college football. But um, I mean, can he run for five yards on third and four if the protection breaks down? Yeah, I've seen him do that a couple of times, but he's not showing up on sports center with a 60 yard touchdown run that's not going to happen he's got an nfl arm and he's really good uh he's really good in the po- in the pocket and look i'll be honest it's still hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that anybody is even talking about a georgia quarterback as being anything close to the top of the college football J- jake Fromm wasn't that long ago and I, do you remember how much georgia fans hyped him up he oh, never yeah. he never threw for 2900 yards never in a season 2900 people throw for that in 6 games I, he, so we've come from that to Carson Beck over 4000 yards it's it's un, I still can't believe it when I, I thought I'd never see Georgia throw the ball around like they've done um uh the last few years I don't know if he's the best quarterback in college football. I, I, you know, I see all the same lists and rankings that everybody else sees and, you know, always going to be drafted here or there. That's even a crap shoot. You don't know which teams are getting, you know, who's getting the first pick versus the second or third pick and who wants a guy that can run around versus who might want more of a pocket passer. So I don't, I don't really know about all that. And I, and honestly, I don't really care about all that. I'm so excited that Georgia has a quarterback that can, we can call a passing play on third and eight. Like I'm still happy about just that because for a long time, we couldn't do that. We just, it was a draw. It was a hand. You better hope Todd Gurley's picking up nine yards on third and eight. I mean, that's just, you know, Georgia doesn't have some kind of long history of great uh, quarterbacks or, or, or really wide receivers for that. Yeah, Stafford was pretty good. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, he, he was all right. Uh, and Aaron Murray right after him. Um, and even right. Stafford, really, you know, Mark, some quarterbacks have great college careers and it doesn't translate to the NFL. And sometimes the opposite is true. Stafford has had a way better NFL career yep. than college career. True. You know, and you look at Stetson Bennett, the guy's a college legend. He'll probably never complete a pass in a real NFL game. Um, it, there's a million other examples of that. Tim Tebow, not great in the NFL, one of the best all time in college. So being great at one doesn't necessarily mean, mean you'll be great at the other. So I'm definitely not knocking Matt Stafford. He's probably the most talented quarterback to ever come through Georgia. Um, and, and he's proven that in the NFL fastest guy ever to 40,000 yards in the NFL is now a Super Bowl win, most likely a hall of famer, I think in the NFL, um, but it, it's still, you know, Georgia's never had a thousand yard receiver. Um, it's just a long list of things. You're running back you, you know, so I, I'm still happy that Georgia's got w- what I would consider just to be a grown up passing game at this point. Um, so it, whether or not Carson Beck's the best quarterback in football or the best quarterback in the SEC or gets drafted number one overall or number five overall, I don't know. Um, and I don't really care. Um, I think Carson Beck is good enough for Georgia to win every game. 
In other words, I don't think he's what will prevent Georgia from getting where they want to go. There are there are bigger issues. And there's been a lot of years at Georgia where it was the quarterback. Oh, if Jake Fromm, every year Jake Fromm was there, for example. We were never going to win anything with Jake Fromm. The guy just wasn't going to happen. Um, I think we can win with Carson Beck. Now, do we have the defensive line to hold up against somebody down the road? I don't know. We'll find that out, you know. Um, but I don't have any – in terms of Carson Beck's ability to play college football this year, I don't have any 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 doubts at all. I think he'll have a great year. Bigger issues. Is everyone banned from driving this season <laughs> on that team? Well, I will give them credit. They tend to stay out of trouble during the season, you know, <laughs> and, and that's the case at a lot of play. You know, you rarely, rarely do you hear of any issues really anywhere during the season. They keep them busy enough during the season. This kind of stuff usually does happen in the off season. So, you know, fingers crossed, you know, who knows, but uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully. Yeah.